Hi, this is Getting Started with the Hemco Standalone. I'm Melissa Silprizio, a member of the Geos Chem support team. In this video, I'll walk you through the basics of downloading the Hemco source code, setting up a run directory, and running a simple Hemco Standalone simulation. Hemco stands for the Harmonized Emissions Component, and it's a package that can be used to read in emissions data, regrid to a specified horizontal resolution, crop to a regional domain if necessary, and compute the resulting emission fluxes. Hemco may be used as a standalone model to diagnose emissions, or it may be interfaced with another model as we do in Geos Chem. This tutorial will focus on using the Hemco standalone, and all the information that we'll go over in this video can be found on the Hemco's user guide, which I've brought up here, and can be found at hemco.readthedocs.io. First, we'll download the Hemco source code, which can be found on GitHub at github.com slash geoschem slash hemco. In past versions of GeosChem, the Hemco code was embedded within the GeosChem source code. But in the latest version, GeosChem 13.0, we split Hemco off from the GeosChem source code and made it into its own repository on GitHub. This allows for Hemco to be more easily interface into other models. It's also our hope that a separate Hemco repository will foster feedback and developments from the larger science community, not just GeosChem users. So for this tutorial, I'll assume you've already met the minimum system requirements, which are the same as those for GeosChem, and that includes things like access to a Unix-based computer system and software packages like Git, a Fortran compiler, NetCDF library, and CMake. Here, I've already opened a terminal window and logged into our local cluster, which uses modules to load software packages. As you can see, I've preloaded several packages, including those that I previously mentioned, Git, GNU Fortran 8.2.0, which is the Fortran compiler that we'll be using, NetCDF, and CMake. So now we're ready to download the Hemco source code. I'll go back to the GitHub page, click on the code button, and copy the URL for the GitHub repository. In the terminal window, I'll type git clone and paste the URL and press enter. Once the code finishes downloading, we can view the contents. And you can see that there's uh, two main directories that we're primarily concerned with, and that's SRC, which has the source code for Hemco, so the code for file I.O., regridding, and computing the emissions. And then there's a subdirectory called run, which has files for creating run directories. So we'll CD into run. And the script that we'll be using to create our run directory is called create render.sh. If we execute that and just follow the prompts, it will set up our Hemco run directory for us. Now, if this is the first time that you're executing create render.sh, you'll first be prompted to provide a path to your emissions data. This is the same path that the GeosChem model uses for its input data. So if you've already run create render for Hemco or for Geos Chem, you'll not need to provide this path as that information is stored in a hidden file in your home directory so that you don't need to enter it every time. I've already provided that path in a previous execution of create render, so I am not prompted for it on the screen here. So for the Hemco standalone run that we'll be performing in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and choose Meritu Meteorology I'll choose four by five horizontal resolution. And then it will ask you for a path to a Hemco configuration file with your emission settings. The easiest way to get a Hemco configuration file is if you've already downloaded the Geos Chem source code, you can just point to the template Hemco configuration files that come with that. So I'm going to go ahead and use the default Hemco configuration file for GeosChem full chemistry simulations. And then I'll enter the path where the run directory will be created. You can then provide a run directory name. If you simply press return, it'll use the default name that Hemco chooses. So I'll go ahead and use the default. And then finally, it'll ask if you want to track run directory changes with Git. 
This is useful if you think you'll be making many changes to your run directory files, um, but for this tutorial, I'll just go ahead and say no. Okay, and then it says that it's created the run directory, so I will navigate to that directory. And this is our Hemco standalone run directory here. All of these .rc files are configuration files for setting up your simulation. So we'll go ahead and go through those quickly. First, we'll start with Hemco sa config .sh. Um, .rc, uh, where SA stands for standalone. So this file is the main configuration file for the Hemco standalone simulation, and it essentially just points to the other files that contain settings for things like your grid, your species, um, the start and end time, and the diagnostics. The settings for meteorology and resolution have been automatically filled in for us by the createRender.sh script. Um, so we're just going to leave these settings as is. Actually, I am going to change the diagnostic frequency. By default, it's set to monthly. I'm going to change that to daily because we're just going to run a one-day simulation. Now, further down, you'll see some switches for um, emission inventories and data files. Um, you can go ahead and ignore these because further down you see that we have an include statement and this is telling Hemco to include the Hemco configuration file that we copied from the GeosChem repository. So let's go ahead and open that file. Okay, and what you see here is that data path that we talked about that points to the emissions data and also the meteorology fields. This path has been automatically filled in by the create render script. You can also modify settings here again for diagnostics and these will overwrite the settings that were specified in the Hemco SA config file. I'm going to go ahead and change diagnostic frequency to end because again we will not be running a monthly simulation. And now further down you can see that these are all of the emission inventories that are included or made available for the full chemistry geoschem simulation. And the settings are automatically configured following the recommend recommendations of the geoschem emissions and deposition working group. So we're going to leave the settings as is. Now further down um, in the base emissions section, you'll see um, many entries for the fields that we want to read into Hemco. So each field is listed with the file path for where to find the data, the variable to read from that file, the dates available, um, units, and, and the you can also see you can apply scale factors and masks. Um, we go into this more in detail in the Hemco user's guide. Uh, next, I'll open the Hemco diagnostics file. And in this file, we list the default emissions diagnostics that are saved out to the simulation. You can turn these on or off. Um, and by, to turn them off, you just simply put a comment character in the first column. You can also add more emissions diagnostics if you'd like. Again, this has gone over in detail in the Hemco user's guide. I'm going to keep the default diagnostics for now. And next, we'll take a look at the Hemco SA grid file. So this file has been automatically created for us when we specified that we wanted to run 4x5 horizontal resolution. And you'll most likely not need to modify this file unless you want to change the horizontal resolution or the domain that you want to run the Hemco stand standalone over. Next, we'll look at the Hemco SA spec file, and this just lists all the species to include in your Hemco standalone, standalone simulation. Again, by default, all of the species that are included in the Geos Chem full chemistry simulation are listed here, along with um, some species properties like molecular weight. Finally, we'll look at the Hemco SA time 
file and by default it's set up to run for one month. Um, but like I said, we are going to change this to a one day simulation. Okay. So now that we've modified the settings in all of our configuration files, we can go ahead and build Hemco. To do this, I'm going to cd into the build directory. Um, but first I'll have you notice here that when you create a Hemco standalone run directory, it automatically creates a symbolic link for you called codedir that points to the Hemco directory that we created the run directory from. And that's important because when we build, we'll type We'll first configure our build using CMake and then the path to our code, which we can just simply specify up one directory and look at this code dir symbolic link. Okay, and CMake will run several checks to ensure that you have all the necessary packages loaded, like the Fortran compiler and NetCDF library. And you can see here at the end that it has successfully created the build files, which are now in this build directory. To compile Hemco, we can type make dash J. And that will go ahead and build the Hemco source code. Now, if you don't plan to make many changes to the Hemco source code, or if you plan on sticking with the same version of Hemco, um, you can also create the build directory within the source code itself uh, so that you don't have to build as often, and you can just specify the run directory to copy the executable to um, every time you create a new run directory. So Hemco has finished compiling, so we can see in the bin subdirectory that we now have a Hemco standalone executable. We need to copy this into our run directory, and to do that, you can tell CMake to um, configure again and use the dash D run dir equals dot dot, telling CMake that the run directory is one directory up from the build directory. And then we can type make install, which will place the Hemco standalone executable in our run directory. Okay, so now we can go ahead and run Hemco by simply typing Hemco standalone in the command line. Uh, you can press enter now and it will pipe the output to the screen, but I'm gonna go ahead and pipe this to a log file so that we can check the contents later if we have any issues with our simulation and need to debug. And I'll run it in the background and then use the tail dash dash follow command to follow the progress of our simulation. So right now Hemco has been initialized and it's going ahead and reading the data files and stepping through the times and at the end, you see Hemco standalone finished. So we can further check that the Hemco standalone finished successfully by looking at the contents of output deer. And you can see that we now have this file called Hemco SA Diagnostics, which is a NetCDF file containing the diagnostics that we specified in our Hemco Diagnostics file. This is a NetCDF file that you can use, um, process with any um, coding language you'd like, like Python, you can process it with a package like our GCPy package. Um, but essentially that's it. Um, we invite you to play around with the Hemco standalone. And if you have any issues, please feel free to submit a new issue on the Hemco GitHub page. And thanks for tuning in.